Hi dear friends and subscribers, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show. And well, we are directly going to the match between India and Australia because what has happened is that Australia, uh, this is the only 20, T20 which is being played at Rajkot today. Australia put up a brilliant performance by putting 201 for 7 of their 20 overs. And right now, India in their chase have just lost the wicket of the opener, Rohit Sharma, who hit a beautiful 6 uh, in the second over of, the, of McKay by picking him off his legs and um, putting him over backward square leg. But right now, Clint McKay has got his man. It was a full length delivery, uh, just uh, swinging away from Rohit Sharma. Rohit Sharma was aiming for a, uh, an off drive over there, but instead he got the outside edge and the wicket keeper Brad Haddon uh, took the catch and Rohit Sharma is walking. Caught Haddon bowled McKay for 8 and Shikhar Dhawan is not out on 3 and India in reply to Australia 201 for 7 of their 20 overs are placed at 12 for 1 uh, in the second over. The second over has just ended so it's 14 for 1 now and just uh, looking at the Australian scorecard uh, as far as Australia were concerned uh, Australia had uh, Nick Madison actually uh, making his uh, uh, debut today and what a debut he had. In fact um, it was an electric start for, Nick, uh, for Madison uh, and Finch. In fact Australia had an electric start uh, with their openers Aaron Finch also an aggressive player but uh, let me talk about Nick Madison because Aaron Finch everyone knows is the world record holder in the T20 cricket but uh, Nick Madison let me tell you he really showed lots of uh, uh, power in his strokes and he was not afraid to really go all hell for leather and uh, with, with the uh, in, um, in fact at one stage it was such uh, that uh, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar uh, was very costly uh, Vinay Kumar was um, handled um, uh, in a very very a powerful style by Nick Madison. Nick Madison not only hit 6 fours and 1 6 uh, in his first knock today as I said was he was making his international debut his first T20 international debut and he was uh, he made 34 runs of uh, just 16 balls with 6 fours and 1 6 in an opening partnership of 50 which came in in, in the fourth over itself in the, in the fifth over itself uh, they had the partnership of uh, 56 with Aaron Finch also cracking boundaries. Now what was good about Nick Madison was not he was not afraid to go over the top he was uh, really going with the full flow of the bat uh, and anything which was uh, wide or short uh, wide of his off stump was really uh, really clattered away by Nick Madison but what one saw was some beautiful timing and one of the straight drives that he played of the bowling of Bhuvaneshwar Kumar was a real treat to watch it was hit straight down the ground or past the, past, uh, the baller Bhuvaneshwar Kumar and Nick Madison the reason I'm talking about him because he's the new player and he really showed uh, lots of uh, power in his hitting and looks to be a very very good prospect but let us understand that Nick Madison is a left hand batsman and he's just age 21 uh, and I think he has a bright prospect after looking at the way he played uh, he was looking absolutely powerful and in fact Dhoni was uh, really at sixes and sevens because he didn't know what to do because he gave one over to Bhuvaneshwar Kumar then Vinay Kumar bowled one over and then he brought Ravi Chandran Ashwin and Ravi Chandran Ashwin was carved in fact uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin if you look at the bowling figures uh, he was given the maximum of tap by the Australian batsman two overs costing 41 now that is a very very rare sight that we see Ravi Chandran Ashwin leaking runs and not bowling at all his full quota two overs costing 41 uh, Ishan Sharma four overs went for 52 uh, the only persons who bowled well according to me uh, was uh, Ravinder Jadeja 4 overs 1 for 23 bowled well Virat Kohli bowled 2 overs no made and none for 24 was also taken but uh, Vinay Kumar was the uh, person who bowled 3 for 26 so he and Bhuvaneshwar uh, Kumar basically uh, came on later uh, to really get this Australian innings uh, really halted at one stage but uh, as I said Nick Madison then was uh, clean bowled by Bhuvaneshwar Kumar a beautiful delivery from Bhuvaneshwar Kumar which actually held its line and Nick Madison uh, was gone as his uh, leg stump was gone so Nick Madison bowled Kumar 34 of 16 balls 6 fours and 1 6 but after that uh, the, the whole total of 201 probably Australia would have probably made more uh, but um, unfortunately there was not much support coming barring Arun Finch uh, who played a very good innings he was there uh, almost till the end till the 17th over and he was cracking boundaries at well and uh, he was um, as you know he is a real danger man as far as 2020 cricket is concerned now in the world and that's what he precisely showed uh, by hitting 89 runs of just 52 deliveries 14 fours and 1 six in that knock uh, and uh, other than that Glenn Maxwell contributed in hard hitting 27 in which there were no boundaries he dealt only in sixes he went after Ashwin he went after 
uh, the other bowlers uh, who were there, Kohli was clattered for sixes. So 27 of just uh, quick fire, 27 of just 13 deliveries. Uh, and other than that, um, Watson was out for six, Bailey was out for a knot, um, Haddon made only five, Moses Andrike struggled with 12 of as many balls, Coulton Isles was not out on 12 of 11 balls, and Faulkner uh, picking up a six of the last ball of the 20th over to finish on 10 not out of five balls, 201 for seven was the target that Australia placed, and right now India uh, were chasing the target of 202 to win uh, the solitary T20 match. India were the ones who actually won the toss and put Australians into bat at the Saurashtra Cricket Association Stadium in Rajkot. As I said, Rohit Sharma is gone for 8. Shakar Dhawan is not out on 8 with a 5 balls with 1-4. And Suresh Rana is not out on 3. So 24-1 is the current score. India chasing 202 for victory. Uh, well, uh, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to leave from here. And we are going to look at the uh, Bangladesh versus New Zealand second first test match, uh, the second day's play. And then if at all any... Uh, if, if at all anything happens at Saurashtra Cricket Association Stadium, I will come back to that. So let's look at the New Zealand game. As I said, New Zealand yesterday uh, were, um, as I said, Bangladesh took the honours yesterday in the evening uh, by picking up three quick wickets and reducing New Zealand to 280 for five. But today, um, uh, in fact, uh, what Bangladesh did is Bangladesh uh, let, let, uh, let go the initiative that they gained yesterday uh, by giving New Zealand an absolute freeway. In fact, they allowed uh, uh, Brian Watling, as I said, Brian Watling was the key, but what was very important, uh, it was a wonderful partnership. The, the, from 300, and in fact, uh, one would have just wondered, yesterday I was telling you about a score of 400, and look at what New Zealand did. New Zealand amassed a score of 469. There were 469 all out, with uh, Brian Watling, the wicket keeper, uh, playing a fine hand. In fact, he became the second centurion uh, in these New Zealand innings, as he carved 103 runs with six fours and two sixes, a very, uh, 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 I mean, he couldn't get much support. Earlier in the day, from 280 for five, uh, in fact, they lost uh, two quick wickets, and, you know, Bangladesh would have been very happy because they lost night watchman Bruce Martin to the bowling of Rubel Hussein for one, who was caught behind, and Corey Anderson uh, was the next victim of the, of the spinner Abdul Razak for one, and that made the score 282 for seven. But after that, Bracewell came in and offered good support, uh, and uh, Bracewell was, um, you know, uh, giving good support, staying at the other end. We have seen that Derek Bracewell has done that in the past too in some test matches. Uh, and today he gave him admirable support. And Brian Watling, well, he played a waiting role. He took his time at the crease. In fact, New Zealand occupied the crease almost till the uh, second session uh, on the second day uh, to be 469 all out. So Brian Watling making 103. But uh, once Bracewell was out, again, um, uh, Bangladesh actually picked up the wicket of uh, Bracewell. They managed to break that partnership which took the score from uh, briefly flourished to 339 uh, when Bracewell was bowled with Swahang Gazi for 29 with 3 fours and 1 6 and in the each story actually is making his debut was Elbert Every Ball Shaki Vlasan for 1 and once again at 342 for 9 when Ish Sodi was out but the good thing was for New Zealand was uh, Watling was there but uh, one thing which was very un unexpected now this is the time uh, that this is the one that uh, Bangladesh would have definitely missed because what happened was from 342 for 9 Bangladesh would have thought probably they could roll them I mean get the New Zealand out below 400 but let me tell you uh, this partnership between Brian Watling and Trent Bold really started blossoming with Trent Bold uh, dealing some huge blows to all the loose balls that he got and he also showed some great application in giving some good support to uh, Brian Watling and that's what enabled Brian Watling to go to his century uh, and eventually he was out uh, the last man out for 103 of 182 balls with six fours and two sixes. But what that essentially did for New Zealand is that put up a big stand from 342. The score swelled, uh, swelled to 469 uh, thanks to an 127 run 10 wicket partnership uh, between Brian Watling who made 103 of 182 balls, six fours and two sixes. But Trent Bolt was absolutely in his element. Uh, he in fact got a 50 under his belt. Uh, he was not out on 52 of, uh, with four fours and three sixes, and all the sixes were hit of the balling of Shakib Al Hassan. And 469, as I said, Bangladesh definitely let go the initiative uh, by allowing New Zealand uh, to go to the go to not safety now, but at a real comfort on this particular pitch. And they have done their bit there with the score uh, um, standing at 469 all out. Looking at the bowling, Rabi Luslam none for 23, Rubel Hussain one for 77, Abdul Razak uh, the most successful, 3 for 147, toiled hard, bowled well, 
So I guess he 32, 6, 79 runs and 2 wickets. Shakir Vlas and 24 hours, 5 maidens, 2 for 89. Uh, and so that is what it is. That stumps him in 469 all out. Thanks to that 127 run or 10 wicket partnership which took them to that. And as I said, Bangladesh definitely let go the initiative after reducing New Zealand to 285. And not only that, they also picked up two quick wickets today, but uh, they were not able to really go through this New Zealand lineup, uh, which raises a lot of questions according to me. As far as Bangladesh were concerned, well, Bangladesh in their reply, uh, in the meanwhile, I'll just give you an update here. India have moved the score now to uh, 34 for 1. Uh, Shikhar Dhawan has moved on to 18 uh, with uh, three boundaries of nine balls. Uh, Shreyas Rana is not out on seven of four balls. I'll come back to that later. So continuing this uh, report between Bangladesh and New Zealand on the second day. Uh, Bangladesh didn't have a good start at all. In fact, they lost both the openers pretty early. Uh, the first to go was uh, Tami Mikbal and he was out for a duck today. As Bolt tested him outside the off stump and then Bolt got a ball uh, which actually swerved away from Tami Mikbal. Tami Mikbal was aiming for a drive through the offside and he got an edge onto it. Williamson at the slips took a catch and he was gone for a duck. So that was the first wicket. After that, Anamul Haq, who made back, uh, made his, um, I mean, ca came back into the Bangladesh team, uh, disappointed as, um, in fact, he got a ball from Bracewell, which was a very wonderful delivery. It was an in-ducker, which had Anamul Haq LBW ball, Bracewell for three. And that was a poor situation for Bangladesh. Uh, with the score, uh, with the both op openers sent back to the pavilion uh, with the score on 8. But after that, the youngsters, Marshal Ayubu was actually uh, making his debut, uh, showed a lot of grit and dedication. What he did was, Marshal Ayub, as you know, he was, he was making his debut, so what one saw is that he was leaving the balls which were going past him harmlessly outside the off stump, not really uh, trying to fiddle at it, which was very good to see. Uh, he showed a lot of application and dedication, it was very important. And um, and also Marshal Ayub also uh, played the bouncers very well. In fact, he ducked very well. Uh, and uh, well, Marshal Ayub only, uh, you know, he was only uh, content in staying at the crease, and that was very important. But he got the company of Mominul Haq, and that's the reason uh, Bangladesh at uh, close of play finished on 103 for two. It was a strokeful knock from Mominul Haq. Now Mominul Haq, we know, as I said. Uh, he's a perfect one-day batsman because he likes playing his strokes. But today, what he saw in Mominul Haq, he decided to take the attack right into the New Zealand bowling. As uh, he went and hit Bracewell for three consecutive fours, uh, then he turned his attention towards uh, the other bowlers. He also uh, hit, I think it was uh, Bruce Martin who was uh, hit for three fours. He started using his feet against the spinners, which is good to see. Mominul Haq is very short, but let me tell you, he looked like a pocket of uh, real uh, pocket... Uh, uh, a pocket dynamo uh, with his batting because he was hitting the ball very well, he was fluently hitting on either side of the wicket and it was good to see and as I said, Marshal Ayub was giving all the strike to Mominul Haq and um, uh, Mominul Haq was uh, not really disappointing, he really uh, provided um, strokeful entertainment to this uh, whole crowd here at the Zahur Ahmed Chaudhary Stadium uh, at the end at the close of play uh, in a score of 103 for 2 at close of play Bangladesh uh, thanks to Mominul Haq who had a stroke filled 77 unbeaten runs to his name uh, of 71 balls playing in one day mode with 13 boundaries and uh, this partnership has uh, really blossomed in fact it puts 95 runs uh, for the third wicket and uh, the end guns uh, have really really stuck it well uh, on the uh, second day of the first test match with Mamin not out 77 13 boundaries and Marshal Ayub um, showing great application and dedication uh, on his international debut not out on 21 with uh, just one boundary. So 103 for 2, I thought uh, Bangladesh uh, definitely uh, got to the safety of stumps uh, thanks to Mominul Haq stroking the ball uh, pretty sweetly. Uh, let's look at the bowling figures. Trent Bolt uh, gave them the breakthrough. 3 overs, 2 maidens, 1 for 5. Um, uh, Doug Bracewell, 4 overs, no maidens, 1 for 25. Uh, Bruce Martin, 3 overs, 1 for 20. As I said, Mominul Haq went after him. Uh, East Sodi, the right arm leg spinner, uh, couldn't make much of an impression. 8 overs cost him 27 runs. Corey Anderson, the left-arm seamer, uh, bowled well, 3 overs, 2 minutes, none for 8. And Williamson, 5 overs, 1 minute, none for 18. There's nothing much happening on the pitch. Uh, and uh, what is very important is that um, one has to see how uh, Bangladesh shape up. In fact, Bangladesh um, definitely have a good batting lineup still to come. Uh, thanks to Marshal Ayub and uh, uh, Mohin Ulak actually sticking out together. They have Shakib Al-Hassan, Mushfiqur Rahim and some Nasir Hussain, Mahmoudul, a lot of good batsmen still to come. And uh, one only hopes that uh, Bangladesh can uh, 
uh, really, really uh, get the score along well in the sense that both of them can push the scoring along tomorrow in the morning on the third day uh, and uh, see what they can do. Uh, but, well, dear fans, friends of Cabas, from here, uh, I'll shift the attention here uh, from the Bangladesh New Zealand match now before I go uh, ahead in this YouTube broadcast. Uh, we'll go live to the ground and see what's happening. Well, uh, I'm just trying to see what is really happening here uh, at the Saurashtra Cricket Association Stadium where the solitary T20 match is played. Uh, and uh, the match score that I have before I leave this YouTube broadcast, uh, it stands at uh, five overs have been completed. So uh, the power play overs are almost over there. Five overs gone, uh, 44 for one. But India, I think, um, uh, looking at the run rate, they require a run rate of uh, the, uh, they require a run rate of uh, Australia set up a run rate of 10.05. But looking at the required run rate, India are doing pretty well, uh, even though they have lost a wicket. The required run rate uh, currently is 8. Point India's run rate is 8.51 currently, but the required run rate, uh, I mean, they, they are just keeping pace with it, which is uh, very good to see. And currently I see a bowling change. Uh, Naran Kultanayal has been brought on to bowl in place of Clint McKay. Uh, and the score uh, for India, in reply to Australia, 201 for 7 of their 20 overs, are, stands at 44 for 1 in the 6th over. Suresh Raina is not out 13 of 11 balls with 2 fours. Shikhar Dhawan is looking good, 20 of 12 balls. Uh, three four. So with this, um, with this little cricket update, and and while I'm talking, Suresh Raina has banged the six of the bowling of Coulter Nile. Now Suresh Raina, as you know, uh, what he is capable of, and Suresh Raina, India definitely. In fact, India have almost doing what Australia have done, because Australia also reached their 50 uh, in the fifth over thanks to Nick Madison's uh, brilliant batting uh, on his first match. And here I see that India are almost only the only. Uh, fa only thing favouring us for Australia was that they have not lost a wicket at that particular time when they reached 50. But for India, India have lost the wicket of Rahul Sharma, and the score now stands at 50 for one uh, in the sixth over. And as I said, Nathan Coulter-Nile, who has been brought on to bowl, was hit for a six. In comes Nathan Coulter-Nile, and as I said, this ball from uh, Nathan Coulter-Nile uh, was a ball which was on the leg stump. Uh, and as you know, um, uh, Raina likes to strike it big on the onside, especially he goes um, very big over deep mid wicket over the mid wicket uh, area and that's what he precisely did. He took the top half of the bat and flew over the line for a six. In the meanwhile, I, I, I probably after this delivery I will be leaving you in my cricket broadcast as Nathan Kuldanayal is coming in and uh, bowls to Raina and Raina, Raina is out, Raina is gone. Oh, that's a wicket for Nathan Kuldanayal. Uh, what a way to get him. In fact, first um, Raina went and slammed him for a six and here today Raina has succumbed as he has been caught by Watson of the bowling of Nathan Coulter Nile for 19 of 13 balls, 2 fours and 1 six. And Aust India are definitely now uh, have to do something better as uh, right now uh, they, they have lost two wickets now uh, with the score on 50 and we are in the sixth over. So Nathan Coulter Nile coming out of the attack, uh, being hit for a six of the delivery uh, and uh, this one uh, was a ball which was uh, not a good delivery, it was a short delivery. It definitely required the punishment and um, uh, Suresh Raina actually went for the pull, star, full pull shot but the ball took the top edge and went fly high in the air and Watson uh, had the uh, mid wicket uh, had to just uh, uh, trot back and take the catch over his shoulder and that's it. That's it from me, your host Ram for the Cricket Happening Show for today. Uh, your host Ram will be seeing you tomorrow probably talking about this uh, match, the T20 match which is just going on between India and Australia. Until then, it's goodbye from your host Ram. Thank you.